Lacey Evans is no longer with WWE. She has changed her Instagram handle to Limitless Macy. Her real name, Macy Estrella. And uh, formerly, it says on her uh, her deal, dub- formerly known as WWE superstar Lacey Evans. She is uh, done with WWE. And I was told that she's going to be opening up a local diner. And that's just it. And I don't know if they released her, if she left, what the deal was. But, you know, this is one of those deals. We're never going to know what what could have happened with Lacey. Because she, you know, whatever you think, they did those vignettes where she talked about all of her history. And they were so great. And it was the perfect setup to at least try to push her as a big-time babyface. And uh, and the whole idea was to do them so that she could turn heel. And uh, that was it. It was done. And Brian, I mean, at that point, that was what? Attempt number four, five with her with a, a different type of gimmick? Well, they never really went hard on all of that. I, I and know. my but... point is, like, you can do that one time. And well, then if you yeah. try again later, it's like, it's done. You had your one chance. Yeah. Which, by the way, there was a Sami Zayn interview. We'll talk about that another day. But, you know, you get one chance sometimes. And you if you screw it up, impression. you can't just go back and go, oh, well, you know, in three years when, uh, you know, no, look, J.D. McDonough is champion, Sami can beat him in Montreal, it's all going to be the same. Nah. Because uh, there's always no. somebody with the mindset of, like, you know, you have Hardcore Holly, and he's Bob Sparky Plug, and he's he's the job squad guy, and it's this, and then he finally hits on something, Billy Gunn. And people think of those examples as success stories, but, like, Lacey Evans is a complete breakdown and failure of the entire system one that it seems to me that they've tried to fix somewhat and a lot of that goes right back to vince mcmahon you have somebody that looks like that with that and again take anything you think about her politics out of the mix or any of that stuff you're signed somebody with that backstory who looks like that who's physically you know able to do a lot of things that a lot of people walking in off the street couldn't you end up giving her a gimmick that she doesn't get a chance to marinate in in nxt which they do a lot more with women now she comes up to the main roster quickly not anywhere near ready not only in character wise but certainly not in the ring and then you go through all of these stop starts with a lot of really stupid things like the rick flair lacey evans deal and the whole thing just was a miss and they kept missing over and over again and like you mentioned you know a lot of times you can't put that stuff back in the bag again even though they're trying with dana brooke on a show we're about to talk about here in a minute so uh, again it was a complete failure and a complete breakdown and everything that can go wrong with a prospect that kind of did all right let's talk about nxt which I'll get through this quick because we got uh, other stuff to do. Just get to Lyra Valkyra. Stax and Tony D beat the Dyad for the tag team titles when, uh, yes, the Creeds were under the masks. But at least they weren't with Joe Gacy's crew to make him look like an even bigger idiot. They came out of the crowd, and uh, Joe Gacy was very mad. But oddly, they were in the building. He did not send his goons to get him. He just looked angry. That was weird. We had a Chase U promo. Thea's still angry. And uh, she's going to be getting a match with J.C. Jane tonight. Andre Chase signed it. And she goes, just try not to throw in the towel this time. Dana Brooke and Blair Davenport. So Dana's going to be turning heel because the fans hate her. But it's like kind of a slow build. And so she's trying to show Kalani Jordan how to beat Blair. And of course she doesn't. And she gets progressively more angry. And then finally she gets pinned. And uh, and she's furious. And it's like, Dana Brooke is such a gimmick. It's like, everything she does is, is like even larger than larger than life. And at the end, after she loses, Kalani, like, she puts her hand on her shoulder like, it's okay. And Dana, with no subtlety, goes... Just stares in fury at this hand. There are some serious Memphis like cartoon characters on that roster. Oh, man. The the JC Thea match itself is a battle of cartoon characters. And then we had uh, Drew Gulak and Trick Williams. This match was not good. And uh, and actually, you know, to be honest, the Blair Davenport Dana Brooke was not good either. But 
There was only there was like one horrible spot in that match where they got totally lost. The rest was passable. But uh, Drew Gulak and Trick Williams, it's like Gulak's been around forever. But man, Trick Williams looks so green in this match. And everything they did was not smooth. And Trick won. He, he was excited. With, and I quote here, my own report, which, by the way, as a subscriber on my Twitter, you get all my TV reports. It's a fun little perk. Trick it's like hit, having a newsletter back again. It is. Trick hit something or other, maybe a kick, but it was hard to tell, and got the pin. <laughs> that was an accurate reporting of what occurred. Yeah. So Corbin did a promo to set up a match with Von Wagner. And, man, I've said this so many times. Von Wagner is an underrated promo. Like, for some reason, the gimmick is Von Wagner can't talk. Yet every time they give him the mic and let him talk, like, he does a good job. He cut a great promo on Baron Corbin after the whole thing was about, you know, Baron tells him, if you ever want to get over, you're going to have to learn how to use the stick. He's talking about talking on the mic. And then, you know, he does a great promo, and he goes to powerbomb through the table, but it gets broken up, so they're going to wrestle at uh, Heat Wave, which is next week. Maybe he watches his father's old tapes and thinks that, like, you know, his dad was actually mean Mike Enos, and, like, he'd always get the microphone taken from him. No, son. You are the son of Wayne Bloom. You can use the microphone. You don't need Robert Stone. Okay. We, we got to keep moving, brother. We're almost Let's out of go. time. All right. Dom and Rhea backstage. They announced Dom and Rhea versus Dragon Lee and Lyra next week. And uh, they had a segment where, like, the story of the segment is is Lyra says to Dragon Lee, she goes, you know, these two, man, they get along great. You know, we, we, need, to, we need to be like them. And Dragon Lee's like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. I'm taken. Even though he's got no ring. And she goes, no, not like that. We just need to know more about each other. So then they spend like, uh, you know, two, three minutes, maybe not that long, but it felt like it, just like trying to explain who they were to each other. And I swear to God, when this was over, I knew less about them than before. I was like, that was amazing. And we had Ali doing something resembling a political speech. He's the North American candidate for that title. Wesley and Dijak, number one contenders match. Uh, Wesley won after Eddie Thorpe distracted Dijak. And, uh, you know, you ain't going to get a bad match with Dijak, and you ain't going to get a bad match with Wesley. This was very good. Wesley and Carmelo is going to be the Heat Wave main event for the title. Tyler Bate and Joe Coffey. Like, this was World Championship Wrestling. Tyler Bate is great. Joe Coffey Despite being dressed like a bumblebee with the rest of Gallus, he's he's great. <laughs> They're kid. having a match that's pretty great. And then just giant Dabakato runs in, and he attacks Tyler and beats him up for the DQ. Yeah, but Dabakato! This absolutely sucked. This was my Booker T impression. We had Nathan Frazier with hard-hitting home truths. You guys got to watch this, this segment. This is great. This segment was so <laughs> awesome. Nathan Frazier's doing his thing, and he's interrupted by Noam Dar on the big screen, who decides he wants to do supernova sessions. And these two numbskulls are going back and forth. I was dying. <laughs> they are fantastic on these talk shows. And going back and forth with each other with dueling talk shows, this was, like, great. And Jakara and the crew are fantastic. Yes. And Noam, too. It's great. So Thea Hale, JC Jane. So JC took off a turnbuckle pad. Chase jumps up on the apron to try to stop Thea from going into it, but it's a distraction, and uh, JC rolls her up and pins her. And even though he was trying to help, she lost, and she's furious at Andre, and she storms off. So it continues. We had a segment with Angel and Umberto. If you lose your way, their grandfather said, don't take it out on each other. So they're going to repackage each other for a new beginning. And then uh, the main event was a contract deal with Wesley and Mello. And a lot of times on NXT, it's like, we're preparing you for the main roster. Both of you need to go out and have a contract signing. You have to cut promos on each other. And probably eight times out of ten, it's like, I don't care any more when it's over than I cared going in. The promos are just whatever. It's generic stuff. Who cares? These guys did a good job. I thought they did a very good job. The Wesley character, I hope he's turning heel. Because his character is so unlikable. He's so whiny. And he's always offended by just stuff that happens every day to everybody in wrestling. But he takes it personally. And Carmel's like, dude, you got to chill out, brother. 
But they go back and forth for a while and finally sign the contracts, and uh, and they're going to have a match next week. And they did a good job. I was more into the match after than I was before, which I can rarely say for these NXT talking segments. But, you know, these two guys are pros. It's Wesley and, and Carmelo Hayes. So overall, it was a good segment, and I would say, you know, I enjoyed the show. Any last comments you'd like to make for this break? Nope, sorry, we're out of time. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.